Chapter 16, Health Promotion of the Adolescent and Family. So biologically, what is developing at this stage? Well, the big physical changes are puberty. And puberty is caused by hormones that are under the influence of the central nervous system. And what happens is sexual maturation. Now, we're concerned if girls have not begun breast development by the age of 13, and they haven't reached menarche, which is their first period, within four years after that, so by the age of 17. For boys, uh, we consider it pubertal delay if they don't have enlargement of the testes or scrotal sac by age 14, and if the genital growth hasn't completed within four years after that, so by age 18. Physically, uh, kids gain their final 20 to 25 percent of height during puberty, and it comes as a growth spurt. It's uh, they usually have a prepubertal growth spurt, right before puberty, and then often um, they'll continue to grow up during puberty as well. Um, but they have that big growth spurt right before, and most of this growth, this last 20 to 25 percent of height is going to be in a 24 to 36 month period. I've known uh, particularly boys who seem like you see them in the spring of one year and they've grown several inches over the summer by the fall usually of ninth grade. They'll reach for something and knock it over because their arms have grown so much longer and their body's gotten taller and they just haven't figured out how big they are yet. Um, so voice also changes, and that's the enlargement of the larynx and the vocal cords. That's more noticeable in boys. Acne is a problem at this age, and that's because the sebaceous glands become active. Uh, it also, not just acne, um, they have a lot more oil production and body odor. Sweat and body odor become an issue during adolescence. Their hair changes, gets coarser, darker, lengthens and their systems are becoming mature. They're finally reaching adult or near adult size on most of their systems. Their muscles are increasing in size and strength. Their cardiac and respiratory function are becoming adult level. Their metabolic functioning, which has been decreasing, that basal metabolic rate and body temperature has been decreasing all through childhood, and they're now reaching adult levels. Erickson says this is the stage of developing a sense of identity and if they don't they are um, at risk of role diffusion or role confusion. In chapter 5 the book called it role confusion and in this chapter they call it role diffusion. I believe it's pretty much the same thing. So at, in this developing a sense of identity they really see themselves as distinct individuals able to make their own choices, independent, uh, they can take into account what their family likes, but they're independent from from um, childhood where they had to follow family rules. They have a strong need to be part of a group. Um, that's just part of who they are, is what group they belong to, and um, that can be both good and bad, uh, that pressure from a group. They're developing that sense of personal identity, but in order to get there, they really go through periods of confusion, depression, discouragement. It's not a easy and uh, level path to get there, as any of you who have raised teenagers can attest to. And if they don't get there, that's when they have this role diffusion, role confusion. They don't really know what group they belong to. They don't really know who they are as an individual. They know what the family rules are, but they don't know if they personally agree or disagree. They don't really have that sense of their own personal identity. And that's our uh, what we're trying to avoid in this age. Now, expectations for them are to have mature sex role behavior at this age, and their emotions Sometimes they are extremely mature, and we say, wow, we did a great job raising them, and then the next minute they do something that's incredibly childlike. Um, and that is normal at this stage. These mood swings are very common. Piaget says this is the age of formal operation, so they can finally think abstractly. They don't need things to be concrete anymore. 
and that allows them to consider the possible. What would it be like if I become a registered nurse? Um, or go to college, or don't go to college, or get married. They can start thinking through possibilities, and they can think, make plans of how to get there as well. Uh, so they can think beyond the present. They can mentally manipulate more than two categories of variables at the same time. And your book says this would be like taking a trip. They can think about distance versus time versus speed. If they're planning to go to New York, and they only have three days, um, they can't drive and get there, but if they fly and they take a night flight to maximize those days. So that's that uh, manipulation of being able to look at m multiple categories and make decisions. Um, they're able to differentiate themselves and their own thoughts from others. And part of that too, they start to be able to think what other people might be thinking. and. Uh, typically, as in adolescence, this is they're thinking of what other people might be thinking about them. When I wear my brown dress, people are thinking I look frumpy, uh, or whatever it might be. But they 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 understand that their thoughts are different than others, and they can start to imagine what other people are thinking. Kohlberg is our uh, theorist for moral development, and. He says that at this point, adolescents are substituting their own set of morals and values for, you know, rather than just what they were taught as a child. And they need to do this. They need to internalize their own set of moral principles. What are they going to live by? What are the principles that are going to guide their life? Up till now, their family told them, you do it this way. And, you know, we believe this. They're now... Um, sorting through that and saying, which of these am I going to follow and which maybe am I not? And as they develop into later adolescence, they're now starting to understand duty and obligation, uh, where they can say, I really want to go to that, but I have an obligation to uh, this other thing that I have to do, so I'm going to say no to the thing I want and follow through with the thing I'm obligated to. Uh, at least we hope they get there. They they do sometimes. Um, and during adolescence, they seriously question the established moral codes, both of our society uh, and of their family. And they really need to do that in order to internalize it. Often they come back to saying, I do believe this, but they need to first uh, question, is this real for me? It was for my family, but is it for me? and then they're able to internalize it and live by it. Socially, um, adolescents need to separate from their families and you know that's part of that developing that uh, identity. So how do they do that? They need to get feel part of that group of peers. So they need to feel acceptance by their peers. They need to have at least a few close friends that they can trust um, and they really need to feel the love and support from their family members in order to successfully make that transition into an independent person, an independent thinker. And some of the other social problems that we have at this age are the pressure to have early sex and um, experiments, experiment with uh, drinking and uh, drug use. At this stage, they're also developing, developing uh, their uh, self-concept and body image. And as I said, they have this sudden growth spurt, which can leave them <laughs> very confused. Their body um, grows so fast, they feel awkward. They sometimes look and act awkward, too. They just aren't quite sure how the, the body works. Um, you know, when they're suddenly taller or bigger, they bump things that they didn't realize they would, so they can be very clumsy, and that can, unfortunately, they're developing the self-concept now, and that can be part of it. They also, at this age, are always comparing themselves to others, and anything where they see a de uh, deficit or a deviation in themselves, um, that can really threaten their body image and their self-concept. And the big problem is 
the body image that we develop during adolescence tends to influence us throughout life. So we want to try and really help them develop a positive self-concept and a good body image. So optimizing health during adolescence, well, we no longer are looking at illness as the major cause of morbidity and mortality, but health damaging behaviors. Most of these that um, they engage in uh, through high risk uh, behaviors, or many of them. So the things we're looking at are injuries. And again, this is often through high risk behaviors, although sometimes it's health or um, sports injuries, things like that. Depression can become a problem at this age. Violence, sexually transmitted infections, pregnancy. So what is our health promotion? It's going to be to teach and guide ways to avoid those risk-taking activities and uh, prevent or minimize health damaging behaviors. Um, in dealing with teens, we want to make sure we provide privacy. They're not going to be honest with us if the family's there particularly if we're asking them questions about things that the family wouldn't necessarily approve of. And we want to make sure that they understand that what they say is confidential. We're not going to go back and talk to the family. They're not going to be comfortable talking to us if they don't, but we want to make sure they understand the limits to confidentiality too. If we feel that they are at risk of hurting themselves or another, or someone else is at risk of hurting themselves or another, it's not covered by confidentiality. I know when I was a school nurse we had a sign that said that in the uh, nursing office in the, the high school because we want them to feel comfortable talking to us but if we're worried that somebody uh, is in danger it's no longer confidential. And also immunizations. At this age that DPT shot, uh, DTAP, Tdap, whichever version of it they had, has pretty much worn off, so they need another shot. We used to just give the tetanus diphtheria. We're now including pertussis in that as well, because here in Fresno County, we have a pertussis outbreak right now. So they should uh, get a booster in that. And girls, if they haven't already had the HPV series, series it can start as young as nine, but if they haven't had it, uh, they should be getting it during adolescence nutrition. Teenagers need more calories and protein. They're going through that, that uh, growth and muscle mass is increasing. Um, they need more nutrition. The problem is they rarely get it. They tend to be poor eaters um, and have low nutritional content in the food they do eat. Lots of fast food that's low in nutrition and they're easily influenced by their peers on their eating habits and both overeating and undereating are a big problem during adolescence. Injury prevention. Uh, kids this age, they have a real propensity for risk-taking behavior because they feel indestructible. They know that kids can die, but they really don't believe it could happen to them. And because of that, 40% of all teen deaths are the result of motor vehicle accidents. And a big problem in these deaths are not using seat belts or combining driving and drinking or um, drug use. So uh, our goal is really to get kids to use seat belts and to have a designated driver if they're going to be somewhere that there is drinking going on. Firearms are also a problem as well as sports injuries. <coughs> 